Jesus is my rock and that's how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Preaching. This is Becca Cook. For all of you who do not know, most of you do. One of my nearest and dearest. And we are gonna talk today all about salvation and just how painful it is to have family members, friends, coworkers, um, and just knowing in general how many people around the world are not saved. It's actually torture to, to, when you think about it too long. Yeah. You really start to play games yes. with your mind. When I first got saved, I was just blown away by it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I cannot wait to tell all of my friends, my, <laughs> my closest friends for like 20 plus years, yeah. you know, sat down with each of them one at a time, told them the story, told them the gospel. You made and, an appointment. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I, did. <laughs> I thought, you know, it was going to be so easy for them to come to Christ because they they know who I am. They trust me. Mm -hmm. They believe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. so I was like, oh, they're all going to get saved. All my friends are going to get saved. Right. Little did I know. I know. It was not the case. You know, one of my best friends said, you know, I'm happy for you, but don't ever proselytize me. And I was oh, like, that's a big word. Yeah. And I did very much the same thing as you did. And I sat my friends down to talk about it. And about a quarter of the way through, it didn't take long. I saw this kind of blaze <laughs> come over their eyes. As, as loving and as gentle and as graceful as I tried to be, still I could see in their eyes that there was this aversion to what I was saying. Jesus and the gospel, I think it's off-putting. And one of the reasons is because it's convicting. People deep down, they know, as Romans 1 says, I think there's that that too. They know and they're threatened by the new spirit that they're sensing yeah. and feeling and that's living inside yeah. of you. And I think that's a little scary also for them. You are a new creation in Christ. But I will say a few of my friends were receptive. Like I actually, you know, when you're in a funk, get a dunk. I, I baptize them in my bathtub. <laughs> and... I, <laughs> and we like read scripture together and stuff and a couple of them did say the words they received Jesus as their Lord and Savior but they didn't they didn't follow through so what do you do now like in terms of your friends and in terms of your family your husband like well it's interesting because now I'm a little bit more outspoken about it obviously because I've got my YouTube channel California preaching and then I you know have California healing my sort of Jesus woman women's hang so I'm a little outspoken about it. So it's not like I really have to say much. Like people know my whole life revolves around Jesus Christ. <laughs> so there's yes. not really much I have to do or say. Although I still have a responsibility to to uh, minister to people and to share the word and the gospel, which I do, but not so much with close family members. Mm-hmm. Because they know where they know what you believe, and they know they know, and I feel like they'll come to me if they. If they're ready. Yeah. So do you just... Or if God draws them. Yeah. Do you just face plant and pray for them constantly? Yeah, but don't you find it kind of harder to pray for family than you do for, like, friends? I, well, I, uh, fortunately, I didn't have to pray for my family because they're all right. Weird. So that was, that was a, a huge kind of bonus when I got saved because all of my siblings are believers and their spouses. So... You should be thanking God for and my that parents. every single day. You I know. You should be thanking God for that. So that it's it was, huge. It was just like, that wasn't a burden on me. But when I was first saved, and still now, but I, I remember praying on my floor in my bedroom and praying for my, especially this one, my, my best, best friend. Um, she and I were like, will and grace. Like, it was mm -hmm. that kind of... I remember you telling me about this. And... Yeah. I remember praying for her and I just the thought of her like an eternal <laughs> yeah, yeah. like like it's so me. not funny but it's just like it is so serious the the consequences uh, yeah, and, and the repercussions of not accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior it's not funny like this is not a game this is not I know play here. And I just when I thought about her I just was like oh yeah like it killed me like one of my best friends in New York it got kind of hostile and um you mean when it got to the gospel part well no when it got to like the gay stuff oh got it yeah you, you know you can talk about that for okay <laughs> that's not a problem <laughs> then we made up immediately and he was like i'm sorry i got so you know aggressive whatever he said and anyway we're, we're still in contact and we're we're still friends we don't see each other very much at mm -hmm. all but but i sent him a text and i said let's call him joe on the last day you will understand how much I love you. 
And he You're gonna make me cry. he texted me back and said thank he just said thanks, Becca. That's all he said. I was I was surprised he even responded. And explain to people who may not understand what that means. Oh, on the last day when when Christ returns and everyone will be judged. Yeah, I was like, you're gonna understand. You will understand that I I loved you more than anyone else right. in your life. Mm -hmm. Like more than anyone in your That's life. Right. But I'm still praying for him. And I have, you know, when I first got saved, I I got a journal. I wrote down every name of like all of my unsafe friends, any anyone I could think of in my life and work life, etc. And I just wrote their names down and that would be a novel in yeah, my life. Yeah. That would be it, it was a novel. a novel. It is a novel. And so I would just pray over all each person, pray for their salvation. And then um sometimes I would have a couple check marks next to the name because uh, a few of them got saved. So I would do a little check mark, but I'm waiting to do all the check marks. Yeah, it can really, really put a damper on my day if I obsess on it too much because I love my family and I love my friends and I, all my coworkers and, you know, just thinking like, oh my gosh, you know, this, this, if this is real and it is, if this is real, there's a lot of people who it's a, the the gate is the, the road is narrow and, and the, gate, and is the narrow. gate is narrow and the road is wide to destruction. Yeah. I am just clinging to the knowledge that when we pray for our loved ones, we are shifting things in the atmosphere, in the spiritual atmosphere. We're we're shifting things in the kingdom for them. And yeah. we just have to remember that. You know, just stay diligent in your prayers. And some people just feel like they want to give up because it's been literally decades and there's there's countless people who had to wait to the how long did it take for them to get to the promised land 40 years 40 years they're wandering in the wilderness you know the and they were getting frustrated they yeah. were just like take us back to egypt like we'd rather be slaves it's mind-boggling to think that they would even think that when they had chicken flying out of the sky for them and stuff i mean you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> they were uh pheasant. i think it's pheasant. Pheasant. Fowl. What it's yeah called? Um, i forgot what it was god is patient you know what i mean and god is going to be you know more patient than we are and we just have to trust in god's eternal plan because obviously you guys know that i pray for my husband every single day and you know what he might already be saved i see a lot <laughs> i see a lot of hope there a lot of confidence <laughs> He's, he's in the waiting room. He's in sure. the waiting room, but like, who am I to know? You know, God is the only one who knows for sure whether mm -hmm. somebody is saved or unsaved. Here's the really difficult part. Not everybody's going to get saved. Newsflash. Not everyone's going to get saved. And the difficult part for me is accepting that because, you know, think about your closest family members and then thinking perhaps they may not get saved. And I asked my friend about this, and she's like, once you're in heaven, you won't care. It won't matter anymore. And I was like, what you, but, I, but I do care. I care. I really care. And she was like, yeah, but once you're in heaven, it won't matter to you anymore. Oh and I was like, that's terrible to say, but it's yeah. kind of true. It's well, yeah. kind of true because once you're in heaven, you're not going to be obsessing about stuff like you're that not, anymore. There's going to be no more tears. There's no, no more, more tears. No mourning. There's, but it's a terrible thing to say, and I'm not trying to, you know, make anyone feel hopeless here. But I'm just saying, like... You know, it's it's a hard pill to swallow that not everybody will. Well, but look saved. at me. I mean, my family prayed for me for twenty plus years. There you go. They prayed for me nonstop, and um, God answered the prayer. So that's right. It's like, and you had a major, yeah, major, you know, I mean, uh, conversion. Yeah. Well, you know, my mom and I've been evangelizing to her for years, and last time I spoke to her about the Lord, um, she said to me. Come on, China. You know all you care about are the mansions in the sky. <laughs> she said, you just want your mansion. That is hilarious. I just, oh, gosh, I thought that was so funny. But my mom, she's so great. She's so funny. I mean, she's receptive to a point, and then she just starts making jokes, and she can't get real with it. She can't just sit down and talk to me. But she'll say, you know, God loves me. I'm, you know, I'm going to heaven. All is fine. You don't have to worry about me. That mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Yeah. And she might be right. This is the point. Yeah. Like sometimes I, mean, yeah. I feel really guilty, you know, making the assessment about whether they're saved or not. I mean, because as a, when the spirit is dwelling in you, you correct. can sense and when you the see spirit, the fruit. you can sense when it's the spirits in somebody else. 
for example, I, I've told this story before, but I was at Whole Foods, was in the checkout line, and the woman, the cashier person, I just like immediately sensed that she was a Christian. It was crazy. It was like, I could feel it. And I, um, I said, you're a Christian, aren't you? And she just smiled and she's like, I sure am. And I was like, praise God. <laughs> so I mean, you can kind of sense. Yeah. What's the worst experience you've had with someone when you tried to evangelize? Like what's, what was the worst response you got from someone? The worst response I got was from Jackie. Yeah. Then Jackie passed away about five years ago now. And um, I'm not really sure how that went for her, but I prayed so much for her when she was in the hospital. And as she was dying, I said, Jackie, I said, Jackie, just say yes to Jesus. Because I knew she was dying in the next few minutes. I said, she couldn't respond. All she could do was hear. The nurse said she can hear. And she was like pretty much convulsing. And I was saying to her, just when you see Jesus, just say yes to the Lord, just say yes. And the nurses were looking at me like offended, like this woman is dying, leave her alone. Uh, but I cared about her eternal salvation, Yeah. you know? So I just said, when you see Jesus, Jackie, just say yes. But a couple years earlier, to get to your question, when we were sitting down and I started talking to her about Jesus, she literally turned to me and she said, you need to stop doing that and don't ever do that again. Wow. And I was like, Ooh. I met a woman at um, a coffee shop and uh, her name's Zoe. And she and I struck up a conversation and I told her I had a YouTube channel and it was for Jesus. And um, she was very intrigued. And she was like, wow, that's so cool. I want to learn more about it. And then I gave her my number and she texted me. She's like, I just watched like 10 of your Cal preaches. I binged it. And this is so awesome. I want to learn more about what you're doing. And I didn't know if she meant like more about what I'm doing with my YouTube channel or more about Jesus. Like I was a little confused. <laughs> and so I invited her over to my house and she came over and, um, and she said, yeah, this is just so I'm so inspired by what you're doing. And I was like, well, cool. Do you want to read the Bible together? And she was like, yes. So I pulled out the Bible. She was so enthusiastic. I was like, wow, okay. This woman's hungry for God. So I got out my Bible and we opened it up and we started reading. And I kind of opened up to something a little in the Old Testament, kind of something a little wrathy and like God, you know, like <laughs> just very Old Testament-ish. And so I'm reading it and I'm like, oh, you know, this is so wrathy. Like, I don't think she's going to respond to this. And she just was like soaking it in. And she was nodding her head in agreement with what I was reading. Well, then I said, let me read a little bit out of the New Testament. So I started reading Ephesians 4, I think it was. And I was reading Ephesians and she just started to cry. And then I said, I said to her, I said, do you want to pray? And she was like, yes. Like literally she just like latched onto me. She said, yes, I want to pray. And I said, well, sometimes I pray because I was like, well, this girl's all out. Like she's all in. So I was like, sometimes I pray like on my face. Sometimes I do what's called a face plant in my world. Would you like to face plant? And she's like, yes. And she like went right down onto her face and she went, I mean, this was the most dramatic conversion Was this ever. in like public or where was At it? At my house. Oh. And so she goes down on her face and we're praying and she's crying and I give her a Bible to take home with her and she's saved. I mean, like she texts me all the time, China, you gave me my first Bible and I go to church all the time and my husband's on the worship team now. Oh my he God. wasn't even saved and now he's on the worship team. They've renewed their vows. You know, so sometimes you just never know, guys. Yeah. You just never know if someone's primed, like... God might have been doing a work in her, you know, yeah, before she course, even met yeah. me, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And I also, I love when people in your past get saved and you didn't even pray for them. Yes. Like, cause, cause this, this dear friend of mine, Ted, um, he lives in New York. He used to live in LA and we used to be good friends in LA. And, uh, and then out of the blue, he I, called me and he said, I'm a Christian now. And I was like, what? Oh my God. Like, wow. It was so shocking. And, um, and I was like, praise God. And so, and he's super just uh, on fire for Jesus. That's really cool.
obviously like, you know, when I was living in LA for years and years, I never thought about like judgment. I never thought about Christ returning. I never thought about hell ever. Like mm -hmm. I just was like, you know, this is it. This is where I am and this is my life. And, but after I got sick, I was like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe yes. that I was in the dark yes. for so long. Yes. I'm so thankful. I was just like, so oh. happy to be in the kingdom of God. I can feel that for you. <laughs> I can feel that. You know, it's like. Now I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, I know that this is a sanctification process and I know that you coming to the Lord um, especially with your background and just with your personal testimony, I know that it didn't happen like overnight where I, it did happen overnight where you received Jesus and you became a Christian, but I'm saying the sanctification process for every Christian can sometimes, it's lifelong. It's lifelong. And so can I ask you kind of a personal question? And if you want to cut this out, you can, but yeah, um, <laughs> I said to Beckett last week at lunch, I was like, Beckett, this is kind of crazy, but I feel like I want to tell you something. <laughs> I feel like you're a little more masculine. Like, I feel like there's less of a sort of, I don't know, if a feminine, word, feminine, a feminine, a feminine, uh, a feminine, a feminine on or you. Just, yeah. I feel like that's starting to diminish. And I'm wondering if you're recognizing that or if I said something and you went, huh, she's right. Or, oh, I didn't realize. I... I, yeah, I didn't really realize that. I just, but I accepted it. I'm, just, yeah. But in terms of sanctification, I mean, God is, it's been 14 years and um, God has done so much sanctifying. You know, every day I just, I was told you, I was riding my bike this morning. I was just like, God, please just have grace and mercy on me as I'm going through this kind of, uh, not difficult time, but just like, just kind of different, like I'm in a different season in my life. Yeah. I was just gonna say, you know what's sort of beautiful about this is that you didn't necessarily recognize what I had recognized. And I think that that is such a testament to it actually being the Holy Spirit's work. Because if you were working toward trying to make that happen, yeah. It would be... Yeah, because yeah, I was surprised when you said that. I, I wasn't, you know what I mean? It wouldn't be real. It's yeah. like it would just be a, a show. But I can tell that it's not. Yeah. Well, good. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Um, and it's so subtle. Interesting. It's so subtle. It's not like you're this whole different... It's just this little subtle interesting. difference that I'm That's seeing. good to know. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. So what would be your advice to people who are watching? What would be your advice to them for their loved ones and their mm -hmm. friends and family? Like what, in terms of <laughs> it's prayer, so hard. what would you tell them uh, to do? Well, okay. My advice would be to, you know, really just understand that Jesus truly does have it handled. As hard as it is sometimes to mm -hmm. wrap our heads around that, yeah. at the end of the day, we can all be in agreement that Jesus knows what he's doing. Jesus knows what he's doing and he's got it handled. That's really hard because it's about a radical surrender. It's yeah. about saying, I radically surrender my children to you. I radically surrender my husband to you. I radically surrender my mom and my dad and my cousin and my, you know, my friend Jenny at work, whatever it is for you. It's about that radical surrender. And it's an act of faith. And God loves that. You know, we, we, faith is defined in the Bible by things that we cannot see, believing in things that we cannot see. Mm -hmm. Right. So just continue believing in what you cannot see would be my advice just believe that God's doing his work and trust just trust that if they are going to come they're gonna go and yeah you know your prayers matter but don't let that drive you bananas you know what I mean don't let that drive you bananas <laughs> just take a moment every day to say you know Lord you know what I want for my family you know what I pray for my family you know what I pray for my friends. Salvation for all my loved ones. It's that simple. Yeah. We don't have to put ourselves into a pretzel every single day. Yeah. You know, God doesn't expect us to do that. It's not about how yeah. hard we're praying Gymnastics. diligently, you know. So what would be your advice to people who have loved ones, family members that are not saved? 
this is living and active. And if you give someone a Bible and just say, hey, read, you know, one of the Gospels, read the Book of Acts, which the Book of Acts is so exciting because it's, it's, yeah, it's like a movie. It's like it a is. movie. While you're reading John, just ask God, God, help me to understand. Because it's hard you, when you're not saved, when you're not a believer, it's, it's almost like this is in Japanese. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So, so <laughs> before we wrap it up, we thought it would be a good idea to pray um, just for all the unsaved souls. Just for that one little prayer for all the yeah. unsaved souls in this All world. of our friends and family and yeah. your friends and family. Yeah. And... We pray that you will join us in this prayer. Yeah. Um, Father, we thank you for this time together and for your glory. Father, you know, we magnify you right now, Jesus, and we just trust you and we trust that although there are days that we are literally just so gutted over the fact that we have family members that are not saved, friends that are not saved, children that are not saved, Lord, you know how debilitating it can be at times for us. It's crippling. And we ask you, Father, to help us remember that at the end of the day, truly it's in your hands, Lord, and you know our hearts and you know what we pray for, for mm -hmm. our, our family. You know our prayers intimately, Father. And that it's an act of faith to just say, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust in your plan. And it's so challenging at times to do that, Father. But we know that there's great, re great reward in that. Personally, I just pray for all of the people in my life who've been in my life and mm -hmm. since kindergarten. <laughs> and all of the people I've come in contact with and shared the gospel with over the years that on on uh, photo shoot sets and everything, Lord, I just pray that you would just reach down. And even the some of the people I mentioned today, I um I pray, Lord, that you would just reach down and grab them and pull them into your kingdom. Yes. We want them to um, have the joy of knowing Jesus and having the joy and the peace of, of actually knowing the meaning of life and actually knowing the truth. So God, uh, please do that work. We thank you so much and we love you. We, we bless you and in Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Bekito, I love you. Shainita. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, I'm in your apartment. Why am I saying that? <laughs> uh, but seriously, thank you for for taking the time to do this video because I know you're a very busy guy. We'll have you back soon. Peace, Peace of, of Christ. Christ. I'm super excited to be here right now talking to you about this because I just think it's going to be a game changer for you and it was for me. I come down on myself really hard. I'm my own worst critic. I read this in a book and I just thought it was so incredible and it was life changing for me. So I'm going to share it with you now. Basically, the book was saying that the harder you criticize yourself and the harder you condemn yourself is the harder that God is hugging you and the harder that he is loving you. That's God's work. When we criticize ourselves, not allowing ourselves to see the goodness that is inherent in us, it's really debilitating. It can be very, very crippling. And I know because I do it myself. And for that reason, I felt it was important to start the Sanctuary Group. And the Sanctuary Group is gonna launch in the spring. I pray that you will go to California Healing, link here, check it out. The Sanctuary Group is gonna be a really soft place for you to land your plane. And and it's going to be an incredible opportunity for you to grow in your relationship with God and to have that networking and community that you're seeking. Even if you don't realize you're seeking it, trust me, you are. Because once you join this group, you're going to be like, I didn't even realize how lonely I was. I didn't even realize how disconnected I was from other people. I really pray that this meeting will bless you. I cannot wait for the launch. Please fill out the form that will be emailed to you after after you join the waitlist and I cannot wait to see you in the sanctuary group in the spring. Peace of Christ.